all you need to make a Mega Man flaming arm cannon. <laughs> I have made some crazy projects over the years. Some of them I've done for work, a few I've done just for myself. But my favorite part has always been the brainstorm, where you take these crazy ideas and fantasies and you figure out how to really make them work. It's time for another brainstorm. Again, uh, this time we have Ryan Fitzpatrick back. This hey is uh, Ryan. He goes by Platinum Fungi Online. Friend of mine. We've done a couple things together. Mm -hmm. um, always fun to brainstorm with you, Ryan. Yeah, I love uh, it. Check out his stuff online at PlatinumFungi.com. Check the link below. Props, game systems, beautiful stuff. Check it out. Uh, today is the infamous Mega Man Arm Cannon. Oh, man. Um... Fire and ice. Fire and ice. Fire and ice. Okay. So... Let's tackle ice first. Straight line. Ice. Always begin with a straight line. You know those little compressed air, like, uh, clean off your keyboard? Oh, yeah. You turn that upside down, cleaner. you get close enough to something and it sprays... Sure. Um, it, it cools it down, the, the uh, propellant in it comes out cold enough, decompresses, gets cold enough that it actually puts a layer of frost on whatever it hits. Mm -hmm. So some type of compressed... Literally one of those is what I would do. Um, so is here's... Is it giant sized? Well... Depends on how, like if you were doing it for a video and you could switch it out um, regularly, I would even just maybe use a regular one with a tube, right? So it needs to be upside down for it to work. You're talking just a regular like keyboard cleaner. Mm -hmm. Canisters. So it would fit in like that, mm -hmm. next to your arm, mm -hmm. and then it comes up like this, and then you've got your nozzle, and then you'd run a tube out like that. Mm -hmm. oh, except, I mean, I guess you'd stop here. But then... Wouldn't you, it... Uh, sorry, sorry, go on. Well, I was just going to say, wouldn't we be uh, proportionally pretty inaccurate here? I mean, our arm cannon's going to be massive, and you've got this teeny tiny stream of... Well, I think that this is one of the ones where it relies on your camera angle and the result, mm. right? So you, you're not going to spray anybody down from across the room. Sure. But you could go whoosh across this tabletop and leave a frosty trail. So just more the the, the effect, the effect. for a video, yeah. yeah. Okay. So technically okay. doing it See, is maybe I, not super... I was effective. thinking more along the lines of like an ice cube shooter. Like you had some type of a, uh, maybe not refrigerated, but some type of a... Um, what do you call those things? The hopper or whatever that holds, you know, the ammo. And you're literally like loading ice cubes and then you just have some type of a firing mechanism that's shooting ice cubes. Just a different, different take on it. You could totally do that. The problem with ice cubes is... Right. And you get water everywhere. Right. So your firing mechanisms and everything have to deal with that. You can do it. You can do it. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a whole different issue. Now, another thing we could do uh, would be liquid nitrogen. Uh -huh. That you could spray. Uh -huh. And liquid nitrogen theoretically works in like squirt guns and stuff. Oh. Yeah. Um, I don't know though, like I haven't played with liquid nitrogen enough to know what I could use to propel it, but you could spray liquid nitrogen out. Mm -hmm. The thing is, it's not like, it's not like, it kind of, it sublimates. If you sprayed it out, it kind of turns into a cloud and sublimates mm -hmm. at a certain point. Mm -hmm. um, so again, for the effect of the video, you'd have to figure out your range and... Yeah, and that would be something that would be fun to play with, is how you could propel liquid nitrogen really quick. Mm -hmm. um, maybe some kind of a peristaltic pump or something, but I don't know. I don't know enough about it to really tackle that right now mm -hmm. in a video this long. Mm -hmm. This, though, would let you go across the surface and leave a trail of frost, mm -hmm. which would be, I think, pretty cool, especially if it was teamed I, I, up with... I would need to see it in action. Something else. I would need to see it in action, because my concern is that our canister would be too small compared to the size of the arm cannon that the trail it would leave would yeah, look like this little yeah, it would, yeah it would look like it would need to be like four times that to yeah, you know yeah. to be proportional to the arm cannon size but maybe not on its own it could really be a letdown right as a bonus tacked on to something else yeah like fire or saw blades then it could be really impressive mm -hmm. like just oh wow it did, did that just do that? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like if you didn't, if you weren't hyping that part of it. Right. So the last one. 
Fire! Fire! Oh yes. So here's our arm cannon for fire. Oh yeah, it actually does change color too with the suit, so that makes sense. Fire, fire, fire. We know how to do fire, don't we, right? We've played with fire. So if you had to take a guess at how you would do fire in here. Uh, propane. Propane. Some type of propane. Yeah, propane would be good. I would probably go with butane just because we've done it so many times. It's so easy. I don't know. The small I... container makes propane difficult. Right, but I'm going propane for safety since your hand is literally like yeah. inside of a more or less, not sealed canister, but kind of your hand's inside of a seal. Very dangerous. Okay. You the know. system is virtually the same. Similar. Either way you go. Okay. So all you need, all you need to make a Mega Man <laughs> flaming arm cannon, uh, you need an igniter here. Uh huh. Okay. Now this is your typical barbecue grill mm -hmm. igniter. Okay. And this is wired into a thumb switch. Um, so your hand. That's my beautiful artwork. Here's your hand. Come on back, here's your arm. Yep, okay, so you've got a thumb switch, boom, there's your there's your trigger that'll actually ignite the flame. Then you have in here, here's your outlet where your gas is going to come out. Mm -hmm. It's gonna come out with some force, hopefully. You need um, a little bit of place for air to mix because the gas won't ignite on its own. It has to be mixed with air, so you're gonna have a bunch of little holes here in this in this pipe. And this pipe is gonna go down to, uh, if you were using propane, you would do, um, you would have to do two compartments here if you want any distance, mm -hmm. okay? Um, you're gonna need a propane canister on one side that is your original, that pipes out to a propane canister on the other side, which is your decompression chamber because propane in its liquid form coming out of the thing it decompresses, it cools down super quick um, and there's usually a regulator on that for safety you need a chamber for it to decompress into so that then you can eject that as a gas uh, at high speed hopefully because you're not going to get a bunch of high speed out of this okay. um, so you have your safety valve here dumping into your container here and this right here is your solenoid valve, just like we had on the fireproofing flame toad and on the fire sword. Well, no, the fire sword didn't have a solenoid valve. Um, the flame toad did. So you'd hit one button, you get spark, another button, you get gas, and then you get a big flame, <laughs> grab the front. Now that's how you would do it with propane. With butane, you would only need, um, you only need this canister. You only need one canister with butane. You don't need this this reservoir. And with butane, instead of using a solenoid valve, you still could. You could just compress this so it's constantly being um, ejected. And then the solenoid valve would open it and it would spray out. Same exact effect. Um, or you could do like what we did on the fire sword and you could have a cable system to push on the back of your butane tank to release the gas instead of a solenoid valve. Mm -hmm. uh, which would then mean you wouldn't need, you know, your power supply, your batteries for the solenoid valve. It's all passive. Um, but again, one of the problems with using butane in that container, in, in the arm cannon. Yeah, I'd want to make certain that there was some type of a, like if you had your butane container that you had some type of a, that was inside of some type of a safety shield or something that if it was dripping, somehow there's barriers between where your hand is and where the butane is. You know, that there's maybe multiple layers of something if possible. Yeah. Because I don't want my... Butane, when you, when you compress the end of it, it leaks around the edges. If you tip it down, the liquid comes out instead of just the gas. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that would be a horrible mess that I wouldn't want to really deal with. But we may make that one day. We we might revisit that one day. It'd be fun. Um, so there you go. There's fire, ice, ice bubbles, blades. and saw blades. Mm -hmm. And a Mega Man arm cannon. Out of a Mega Man arm cannon. I think I think this one's totally feasible. I think we're yep. we're totally, totally on the right track to do this one. Totally. If we wanted. Yep. Until next time. <laughs>